The name Roger Penske is synonymous with success. As the owner of one of the world's largest automotive groups, Penske presides over more than 250 U.S. and international car dealerships. Penske Truck Leasing, Penske Logistics, and other automotive-related businesses have made him one of the most successful entrepreneurs in the world, and the Penske Racing Team has put him in the fast lane to automotive legend. Recently, Roger and Dr. Todd Thomas discussed what it takes to drive a successful corporation. When you're looking for a leader in one of your organizations, what kind of person are you looking for? When I think about leadership, I think about uh, internal opportunities within the company. So we look for people who have had experience in our business or a business that we're involved in, some that we can bring up through the organization. And it amazes me how many of these big companies that have to go outside to get leadership. That's a big fallacy because you need to know, be grounded in the business that you're going to try to manage. And to me, it's all about people. It's about human capital. And human capital wins on, on the racetrack, it wins in sales, it wins in operations, and certainly I say it wins in business. I would say that 90% of the people that we move through the organization are ones that have had some tie over some period of time. And I think it's so important to have experience within the organization. So what sets a person apart uh, as potentially a leader in your organization versus someone who's perhaps very good at their job, but, but really not seen as a leader? When you look at our business, we have a very flat organization. I think that's first important because you have to feel comfortable in that environment. And so many people today are brought up that they don't know how to go downstairs, they can only go upstairs. I look at people that can work in a flat organization and have the comfort level to deal with all levels and with all details and capabilities that we might need for them to be able to communicate with. Some of your business is quite complex. How do you have such a flat organization then? The biggest job I had when I took over Detroit Diesel was the fact that you had someone running the plant and yet if the salespeople wanted to bring a customer into the plant, they really didn't want them in the plant. That wasn't their territory. So we want to open up this environment and use all of the aspects of our business to help sell an individual or a customer. I'm looking at, at the interface with other people on the team and that's very important to me. To me, it's very important to let people be in an environment where they can fail. You see, one of the things in big companies, people don't want to be in an environment where they might fail. I, I can fail on the racetrack on a Saturday. I can lose a sale. I lose. So what we want to do is be sure that we have the tension in the organization where people have the responsibility to make a decision at the lowest level. And I've always said, if you're not in an environment where you might fail, you really don't have a job. How do you handle it if someone uh, makes a decision that's a poor one and can only be called failure? Well, I think when you look at, at a failure, you have to sit down with that individual and determine, you know, what was the process? The decision making, was it a team decision? Was it your decision? And as far as I'm concerned, if a person fails once, you work with them. If they fail twice, you try again. But after that, you've got to determine, is he in a position or in a job? where he's not going to be able to make it long term and benefit the organization. And I can tell you many big companies look at taking that bottom 10 or 15 out all the time because if you don't keep that bar high, you're going to have mediocrity. You've got to be in a position to be always making your pit stops faster. Think about it. In the old days, we could do a pit stop in a minute and you still won the race. Today, you've got to do it in eight seconds, so you know, the bar keeps going up. How do you align the leaders to that thought process to say it's not a threat? to fail or to have a flat organization? I typically have, have gone out in the businesses that we own or manage today. I've been at the forefront. I want to understand the business from the lowest level. You've got senior management through these bigger organizations who skip through the organization and you never know where they grounded. One of the things we have to look at is having people in the job and understanding it completely. I've tried to develop the knowledge myself financially or technically or engineering wise I might have someone on the team but what we do we're inclusive we intend to always bring as many people as we can into the organization we have a board meeting for our companies we like to bring the senior leadership in to sit at the board meeting to understand what are the questions from the board what are the commitments that the senior manager or the CEO is making to that board of directors because if you're not inclusive and you don't understand the business yourself it's going to be very hard to manage it I would think with your background and perspective on racing that you would be about speed and about getting things done quickly. Related to the development of your leaders, 
and being grounded in the business, doesn't that slow the process down? You might come in with a certain amount of knowledge from another organization, but I think you got to be on the spot. You got to be in that business to understand. The way we've been able to, to build this organization is that people come in at a lower level. But when you look at our leadership, we can reach into the organization and take these young people or people that are matured within our organization and it continues to work. I go back and look in 1970, we had a truck leasing business uh, that had uh, 900 vehicles. Today we have over 220,000, 80,000 heavy duty trucks, tractors. How do you manage that? Because we have a system that people come in and understand it and we move from within the organization. And typically, I don't remember other than maybe acquisitions, We've had any senior leadership hasn't been built within the organization. My dad told me a long time ago, it's not what's good for you, Roger, it's what's good for the company. And if the company is successful, you're going to be successful. And sometimes people forget about that. How do you look at the team in terms of a leadership team? Is that a concept that you use in your business? When I look at a leadership team, you know, you have certain functional areas. So obviously you have personnel, you've got finance, you have sales, you have engineering, you have manufacturing. And what I look at is being sure that you're cross-pollinating these people. In many cases, people are working for companies who don't realize they're in trouble financially. You know why? Because they haven't communicated that. I think it's very important, the good and the bad has to be communicated. If you don't have the field understanding what's going on at home and vice versa, you're not going to have a fluid organization and be able to have the success you want in building, building your brand. And that's what I'm all about, building a brand. And to me, it's because of relationships. Once you have the internal capability, it's amazing because you build that integrity with your customers. If we have 300 franchises worldwide, and I would have to say that I'll visit over half of those at least once during a 12-month period. And I don't just walk into the boardroom. The first thing I do is walk in the shop. I talk to the technicians. Guess what? I even go and ask where the warranty parts are, you know, in a dealership. What, how do we handle the warranty that's going back to the OEM? Because these are some areas that people don't even look at. I think you've got to be able to deal at the lowest level, not in a dominating way at all, more as a team player, as someone, as a support tool. In some way, you have to translate that through your organization. We really got to think long term. And we're in an environment today, outside environment, that's driving us to short term decisions to see financial success. And we've seen some of this lately, which has been troubling to me and troubling to the marketplace, not only in the U.S., but around the world. Right. So you have to find a way to balance that short term focus and the long term focus. The way you're communicating that in your organization is pretty simple. It's is it good for the company? And if so, fine. And if not, then we'll do something else. The most important thing they say about our companies, we, we, our first goal is take care of the customer. That's, that's the number one highest scored question you know, in our business. The lowest uh, scored is we don't move on people who are marginal performers. It's amazing. That's our own people telling us this. Now, what do you attribute that culture to? Where do you see that culture being reinforced or being created? When you start your own business, you don't have a customer and you have very little capital to start with. You revere every single customer and you do everything you can to keep that customer. And then many times the re repeat and referral part of your business is how you get market share. One of the things we track in our dealership business is the owner loyalty every single month. And it's interesting today if you look at owner loyalty, there's a much higher owner loyalty in the premium brands, the Mercedes, the Lexus, the BMWs, the Porsche and the Audis versus maybe the Honda, the Toyota, and maybe the General Motors and the big three. There seems to be a lot more churn with that customer. We want to take that turnover and slow it way down and move those people into loyal Penske customers. I've always said, and, and maybe financial people would laugh at me, but I think the accommodation is a lot more important than the interest rate today, tomorrow, and yesterday as far as we're concerned. Because as we build that trust with an organization, we can go back in and say, here's our results. And we had a huge failure back uh, a number of years ago when we bought the Kmart Auto Centers. And we thought with our understanding, with the support of, of Exxon Mobil and Napa and Goodyear and all the people that were involved, this was going to be right down our alley. Well, I can tell you, it was a huge loss for us. It almost was... I think between 175 and 200 million dollars we lost in that business. And I had to go to the banks and say, look, this year we're not going to write this off or throw our keys on the table and walk away. We're going to pay all these vendors. We're going to take care of our people. Guess what? The banks never walked away from us and supported us in the future. 
You know, it's interesting because you're describing a very empowered organization, but you're not using the terminology. I'm assuming that that really is a quality of your company if people are able to operate in a flatter organization and make decisions and move in an independent but team-based way. You know, the word empowerment obviously is a proper term, but, but we have people that, that really grow into this responsibility. And more important, we trust them and their high integrity because when they go out, they represent the company. Again, we go right back to the core value here, what's best for the company. We bring the four or five or six key people in and then they go out and implement uh, the decision or whatever the requirement is in the process. It's not because I told them, it's because together we've decided what's going to be the offense or defense in a particular situation. I think that's important because our people know what to do. And if they make a mistake, we come back and we talk about it. Remember, one person might make the wrong decision, but if it affects the company, we've got to sit down together and decide what do we do wrong here and what do we do on the next step. I'm assuming that with the importance that you put on growing talent within, that one of the responsibilities of your leaders is developing other leaders. Absolutely. We have 40,000 people, but it's broken down into each one of the businesses. One of the key metrics that we look at all the time is with, with less turnover. The problem is in many businesses, there's no turnover. It's ironic because you need some turnover, and that's managed turnover from the bottom where you're taking out the weaker people. What we do with, with senior leaders that come into uh, our top jobs, will go to a third-party coach to give them some metrics that we maybe might not be able to, to handle because of the daily job we're doing. But I like to go to a third party in many cases because they can have a clear idea of what are the requirements for an executive in an HR. And I think there's some great people out there that we can call on and that's because we don't have an organization that's fat with a lot of extra folks and I think that's been very powerful. We also take 25 or 30 people a year and put them through NADA school, that's the National Automobile Dealer School. And these are maybe a women that might have been a receptionist, someone might have been a service manager, someone might have been a sales manager. We want to go down in the organization to be sure that we're looking at a cross-section of, of potential talent that can help run the company because we've got to be a diverse company. We're living in a diverse society today. We're looking at all aspects of the requirements of a job but also all the right people that can take on that responsibility. Is there a time when it's acceptable for one of your teams to, to not be moving for first place in a particular race? Is it ever okay that they're not going to be number one? If you look at racing, um, reliability is first. Because if you don't finish, you can't finish first. We have to have drivers that understand that, that the goal is to finish the last lap, not the first lap. There's got to be harmony between where we are in the race, what are the expectations, what you might find out. In many races we get into, we're going to be very happy, you know, to finish third or fourth or fifth or sixth maybe. A weekend ago we were glad to get a tenth place finish in the top ten. But we learned from that because you can't average there. you got to win or you don't win. We were fortunate this year to win that big race. And we've tried for many years, but over the long season it's like 12 months in your business. You don't make it all in the first quarter, and you lose it in the second, and make it in the third, and lose it again in the fourth. There's got to be a continuity through the entire year. And sometimes it's seasonality that affects you. You know, it might be uh, you're making an acquisition. Sometimes integration it takes time. We find very good people within these acquisitions that will, will really come into our culture and be part of our team. And it's the same thing in racing. We cannot have turnover. We got to build from within. Universal Technical Institute is a training company that trains about 18,000 technicians a year. And we take many of those young people and put them on the race team. It's very, these are kids 18, 19, and 20 years old who are becoming our best technicians. Because we can mold those people. We know who these people are. Mm -hmm. And they want that movement. And that's how we retain our people too, because we grow and, we're, and we also give them opportunities to, to grow within the organization. If I were to go into your organization, to go to one of your middle managers, and I were to say, what's the overall objective of Penske Truck Leasing? What do you imagine would be the response I would get? First thing, are we going to take care of our customer. I think we build from there. And that's what we have to be able to sell to the next potential customer. Here's a group of existing customers that we have. We don't turn them over. 
we have a process here, we have the best network. And I think the people themselves, the type of people that we've been able to attract, understand that the core values of our company is right around the customer. And of course, if the customer is satisfied, your company's going to be successful. Roger, thanks for spending a few minutes with us. 